I'm Claudia, and I am the author of the Evernight series and Fateful, which is a standalone novel, the one about the werewolves on the Titanic. As a friend of mine calls it, Were-tanic, or as I called it when I was writing it, yes, the situation can get worse. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the story of a young girl named Tess who works in service. That means she's a young lady's maid, and... Um, you know, I wanted to, I mean, when you, when you see the movie Titanic, when you read about the Titanic, you're really caught up in all that sort of gilded age glamour, you know, the grand staircase, the beautiful dresses, and all of these incredible things. But the thing is, somebody has to make all that happen. And Tess is one of the people who makes all that happen. You know, things gleam because she polishes them. The carpet is gorgeous because she's down on her hands and knees scrubbing it. So she's in that world, but she has a very jaded take on it. And also she works for a family that brings more than its share of drama to, uh, to her life. Uh, I always say if they'd had reality shows in 1912, then there would have been many reality shows. Everybody in this family probably could have gotten one. <laughs> so she wants out and she's been saving up her money uh, bit by bit. And she is determined that when they reach America, she's gonna set out on her own and start a new life. So she has two problems. One, which she is not aware of until very late in the game, is that she is on the Titanic. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a problem, but of course that's going to create its complications later. The second is that she meets this guy, Alec, who in many ways seems fabulous. He's, he's handsome, he's very bright, uh, he isn't at all daunted by the fact that she's a servant girl, but he seems to have a secret, and he's been, he's American, but he's been living in Europe under sort of mysterious circumstances for a couple of years, and now he's going back to the States in an awful hurry, and he is being pursued by a fairly dark and shadowy brotherhood, and all of these individuals have a tendency to vanish around the time the sun goes down. So, uh... Let's see, with the romance and the werewolves, I felt free to let my imagination go crazy. With the Titanic, I tried really hard to be true to the facts of it because when you're, when you, if you want to research the Titanic, you can find everything, the blueprints, the menus, all of it. So everything's on the deck where I want it to be. I stuck close to the real timeline, everything like that, which made it fun. And also, it was interesting to look at everything about the Titanic and say, so what is useful for werewolves on board? <laughs> um, and one of the things I realized is you're going to need a room that's difficult to tear up. Claws, biting, you don't want to uh, shred the grand staircase. You know, what will Jack and Rose do in that case? <laughs> um, but uh, it turns out on board they had some Turkish baths, beautiful steam baths. And unfortunately, Tess who has run afoul of Mikhail, the main leader of the Brotherhood on board. And she has just been shoved inside. We're going to have a quick reading here. I fall through darkness. Oh, wait. This should be an English accent, but I'm not going to subject you to my version. <laughs> imagine. Everyone imagine. I fall through darkness, through heat, as I tumble onto my hands and knees upon a floor of moist green and white tiles. The steam of the bath still clouds the air, as though I'd been tossed into the fog. I can't see, can't breathe. The main light is from the hallway, and it outlines Mikhail's body as he walks inside after me and slams the door behind him. I expect to be beaten or killed. I do not expect the wolf. First I see the eyes. They're green gold, flat and reflective. It's so dark I can hardly make out any shapes, at least not yet. But whatever light is in this room gleams in the animal gaze. Hot, vapor, vapor-heavy air burns my lungs and makes me cough as I push myself away from those eyes. But I hit something, someone. Mikhail is standing right behind me. His laughter echoes in the tile room. I scramble away from him toward the corner, but the eyes follow me. As my own eyes adjust to the darkness, the beast's enormous shape appears amid the swirling steam. Pointed ears, wide shoulders, muscled legs, thick red fur. Wolf, I think, just at the moment it begins to growl. He's hungry, Mikhail says. He has no fear. I thought it was high time I fed him. Don't you agree? The wolf lunges at me and I scream. I manage to leap out of the wolf's way, but only by inches. I can sense its weight and speed as it skids past me. I catch a glimpse of its long, white teeth. Quickly, I scramble to my feet and run through the opulent bath, looking for a door that isn't blocked by Mikhail. 
One wall is lined with small wooden booths for changing, perhaps? I don't care. They have doors and maybe I can lock myself in. But the wood is so thin, so flimsy. They're not meant to provide protection, only privacy. It's all I've got, though. I brace myself back against the door and wince as I hear the wolf running toward me. <laughs> uh, for Alec in my book, uh, The Hero, we do find out that he's been living in Paris the last couple of years and that he was enjoying the Bohemian scene. We find out that much. He may have had a bit more absinthe at that time <laughs> <laughs> than actually creeps into the book, but uh, uh, he, he, he enjoyed his time in Paris. <laughs> All right, I'm giving a fictional moment because for real moments you're gonna have to like take me out to dinner and <laughs> margaritas. Yeah, mar margaritas or chocolate. <laughs> yeah, then, then then it may flip. But um, with I guess the most romantic moment in Fate, I'll try not to spoil too much. But uh, basically. Uh, I don't. I think by now we've, we've all figured out that Alec is a werewolf. Yes. Um, uh, you look like sharp people who could put that together. Um, but he has very little memory or understanding of what happens when he's in his wolf form. You know, the first thing he does in the morning, basically, is sort of look around and see, like, what damage did I do? And he's hoping, hoping, hoping that he hasn't hurt anybody and that he hasn't betrayed his secret and that he hasn't ruined his father's life. His father is a very loving parent who has really sacrificed a lot to try and protect Alec's secret and take care of him. You know, and he's, and sometimes he's more afraid of ruining his father's life than he is of anything that would happen to him. And of course, now he's also scared for Tess. Uh, and Tess, of course, sees him as both the wolf and the human. And there's a scene where he sort of feels like she's never going to trust him again because she has sort of seen some things and found out some things about his mysterious life away from Europe uh, that really devastate him. And she comes to him in the library. Yes, they had a library on the Titanic too. Uh, but she comes to him in the library and she finally understands who he is as the wolf and he doesn't understand. And she's able to supply sort of this missing element that he has needed to know for so long. And uh, because for me, the most romantic thing is sort of the sense that two people, um, I don't know, that you sort of give something of that person back to themselves and you're a little bit of the person that you love, give something of you back to yourself that maybe you're not fully in touch with or that you fully understand. And, and Tess is able to do that for Alec.